the last of the cowboys to giddy up gone, boys. Eighteen wheels on the concrete, it's a slow and dying breed. Rolling like Jesse James, a modern day outlaw game. If you're out here riding with me, come on back and make some noise. We're the last of the cowboys. found ourselves here cruising along here in uh, Georgia, just uh, west of Bainbridge, Georgia. And uh, we got some familiar characters, but one uh, in the lead here that we don't know. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell me who you are and uh, what you're running with there. My name is Jesse Davis. I'm out of Orangeburg, South Carolina. Living with some cop from Georgia to Texas for some custom harvesters. 10 for what kind of truck you running there? I got a 2000 Peterbilt with a 34 16 cat motor in it. Turned to 550. Well, uh, well, you're looking pretty good, sounding pretty good here today. Now, you said some custom uh, custom picking. Tell me about the machine that's there on the, that you guys are hauling and uh, what's done with it. They harvest cotton out, out the field, cotton that makes everybody's clothes and stuff. And uh, they make a round bale. They pick them up, take them to the cotton gin them. So what's what, what's it like to haul one of those? So what's the the weight and size of you guys uh, today? These machines are pretty heavy. Um, they're a little over sixty something thousand pounds. We're grossing about a hundred and six, hundred and seven thousand pounds. Yeah, that's no lightweight there. What does it take to get one of those ready to haul out? Uh, I mean, you just can't uh, drive it up there on the truck and get down the road. So tell me about what it takes to get it ready. Well, these pickers, it takes a little bit of time. We break them down and move them and put them back together. And uh, we break one down in about three hours. And um, it's come a long ways. We've moved over 500 of them, I have. And uh, it's a pretty big deal. We break them down and move them and put them back together. There's some parts that has to haul, be hauled. And it's a pretty big bulky machine. Yeah, it looks that way. So you said 500 machines. You guys are getting around with these things. Is this something that you normally do? Uh, just specifically hauling these kind of machines? Yeah, well, I got two of my buddies helping me today. And I um, got Trip Looper back there with JD Looper Incorporated. And uh, he helps me all the time. And I got Rusty Moss with Mag Enterprises back there. And he's hauling one for us, too. You know, a lot of times it's in a rush, rush to get them down there to help so they can harvest cotton. And uh, so the more we can take it one time, the better off and the more efficient we can get them there. I'm getting a good look at uh, how you guys have tied these things down. Uh, you're tied around some of the axles, or at least the, the, it looks like the, the wheel there, and uh, tire pressures are low. What are some of the tricks of getting these things down the road? Well, you have to have a special trailer. They, um, these things are pretty long. You have to have at least 30. 33, 34 foot in the wheel to haul these pickers and um, we let the air out the tires to get the height down some and get them down to 12 foot wide and 
46 tall. I don't want to say that it sounds easy enough because it isn't. Tell me about the history. How long you've been trucking for yourself and uh, even the name of the company? The name of my company is J.L. Davis and Sons and uh, I named it at my three, I got three boys, Little Chance and Logan and I started hauling these cop pickers about eight or nine years ago and turned into just a few here in Yonder and it's turned into as much as 75, 80 of them a year with uh, moving them all year long. We move a lot of port machines. A lot of machines going across seas. We move for a lot of John Deere dealers and some independent salesmen too. All right, so tell me about uh, the pickup here from Agro. You guys got nice looking trucks here. They, they have to feel some kind of way about you guys doing the work. I've been doing this for like I say eight or nine years and a lot of customers call back. You know, these things are, uh, it's a lot to breaking one down and moving it. And um, they do them so fast and efficient and um, try to make the customer happy. And, John, their dealer's satisfied, and like Agro and everybody, and move a lot of machines out of Georgia to Texas, and then when they get through harvesting in Texas, we'll, we'll be going and getting them and bringing them back this way. Uh, it looks like you might even have uh, an entourage there. I'd seen a, a truck and trailer with some parts on it. You know, tell me about that. That's two of the headers off these machines and the dual wheels and just some of the parts that we had to take off. You can't haul it all in one load. and. Um, so we usually have to get a, somebody to pull a gooseneck or a pickup and pull a trailer to haul some of the spare parts and all and, um, until we get to where we're going and we'll uh, assemble them back together. 10 four. I'm going to hop back here to Mr. Uh, Trip Looper. I think the last time I saw you, I don't think you said much on camera. How's it going for you today there, sir? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing good. Tell me about that truck you're running there. Uh, 2007, 379 Peterbilt, uh, got a 3406 E-Cat. Yeah, how long have you been running it for and how's it been doing for you? I've had it for roughly about five years now. Uh, bought a fellow named Mike Horse from Pennsylvania. He built it from the ground up and uh, it's been a good one. I can't complain a bit. Oh, I, I knew something was up with that truck. It's got a certain look to it. You know, and it, what's cool is that around the country, different truck builders have a certain look of how they put these trucks together. Uh, it's certainly a good looking truck. Let's ease on back here to Mr. Moss. Uh, how you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. Good to run up on you again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's uh, things been going for you? Uh, pretty busy. Busy as always. That's pretty good. Well, you're looking good uh, holding that back door there. You're looking good. I'm not going to go into it about uh, your truck because uh, some people can they, they know where to find you there on the internet. But uh, anything new and improved there with the truck? Uh, no, just... Just been driving it every day and just trying to make a living with it. So I want to give the viewers something really that they can uh, kind of grasp there. Uh, what's the footprint of one of these machines like uh, before you take it apart? And then what is it like to get it on the trailer? You know, what's going on during that process of getting it on there? I would say the footprint was probably be uh, 16 wide at least. And uh, the wheelbase probably be 20 foot and the wheelbase. But when you uh, put it in transport mode, like Jesse said, uh, it's going to be, we got to stretch this one, we have to have these stretch trailers. Trip's got a specialized uh, ag trailer that's 
only to specialize the haul uh, these machines, uh, which I'm pulling a, a XL Specialized uh, stretch detach, and uh, we have to stretch open about five to six feet to, to make everything fit. So it's not going to fit on your standard uh, drop deck or double drop deck or whatever it is. I know I get, might be getting the terminology wrong, but you got to know what you're doing to get this stuff done right. Yeah, for for sure. So Jesse, we've made our way out here to, to I-10 and you guys just can't get out here and on the road and, and pick any old road to, to get to where you want to go. What's a what's the process for you of getting your permits and everything? My wife, Suzanne, she takes care of ordering, calling each state, ordering our permits and stuff for us and emailing them and faxing them to us and she does a pretty big process helping us with all that. It saves us a lot of headache while we out here breaking these machines down. and putting them back together and stuff and she really helps a lot with all of that. Takes a lot of load off of us. Is it a simple call up and say, hey, I want to take this thing from point A to point B and they say, okay. You know, how does that go? 
Yeah, well, you call each state and, um, you have to call each state and tell them your width and your height and, um, put in for certain routes, depending on which way we want to go. And, um, it's a pretty big process calling each state and dealing with it. And, um, you know, she's gotten real good at it because she does it for us every trip. And, um, she's a big part of this business and, uh, helping us for what we're doing and really helps us out a lot. All right, well, Jesse, it was uh, good seeing you guys over here and uh, learning how you guys put uh, these machines together. We're going to hop off here and get uh, topped off, but I hope you guys have uh, a successful uh, route out there to uh, Texas and back. Roger, we sure appreciate it. Uh, thank you a lot.